everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Readology. I am so excited to be here today talking to you guys about a really important topic. But as I said in my last episode, I'm really trying to get these episodes started off on the right note. So I want us all to just take a moment wherever you are to decompress from your day. Take a nice deep inhale. You can close your eyes doing this. Hold that inhale. You can exhale. And I want you to place one hand over your heart, one hand over your stomach or diaphragm, and just take a moment. Don't do this if you're driving. But take a moment to just think of one thing that you're grateful for. And I'll go first. As I say, I'll go first. I'll go and I'll tell you guys. Today, I'm grateful for music. You can probably see my ukulele in the background here. Um, So I got a ukulele for Christmas last year, and it's been something that I've been trying to continue playing and continue to take up. So I just feel like I'm making magic every time I'm learning how to play a song. Um, So I hope you guys have taken your moment of gratitude, and let's hop into the podcast. So the funny thing is, I know that this is the Readology podcast, where I read self-help books and I talk about them um, in podcast form so that, you know, you guys don't have to read them. That's the whole premise of this podcast. So actually, it's interesting because one book that I'm reading called The Artist's Way, and I have mentioned this book before in the past where it's kind of a rehabilitation program for your inner child and your inner artist. It's all about rediscovering your creativity. Um, And I think the program's like 16, it's like either 12 or 16 weeks long, but every chapter in the book is a different week. And then you have assignments every week that get you up to that, um, that 12 or 16 week mark. And once you're at that mark, like, you know, along the way you're having breakthroughs and you're going on artist dates on your own and you're doing your stream of consciousness journaling, which I talked about in the last episode. Um, so it's been really amazing, but the week that I'm on, I'm on week number five And this week, it told me that I'm not allowed to read anything other than the book. Um, I haven't been doing the best job because, you know, I've been reading on social media. But it basically talks about how when you're reading, you just have all of these inputs into your consciousness and your psyche, and you're not able to think your own thoughts. So it was saying, take a break from that this week to simply focus on creating, simply focus on what are your thoughts or my thoughts in this case. Um, without reading, without having any external inputs. So I did not and will not be sharing a portion of 101 essays that will change the way you think this week. Instead, I'm going to be reflecting on a journaling prompt from The Artist Way, and we're going to be talking about a ton of other topics. So the topic of this episode today is how we are unconditioned or we are conditioned for happiness and how to stop that and how to break out of that. So I'm really excited because as I said, I did this journal prompt in the artist way yesterday and all of these things just started coming to me um, and I really wanted to share it. So let's dive right on in. Um, So I kind of want to talk about where this started and where the premise of, you know, this whole conversation is coming from. Recently, I've been feeling a lot of discontent at where I'm at in my life and I am looking at my notes here because I did write notes for this. But yeah, I've been feeling a lot of discontent with my life, with my job, my career path, the location that I live in. And a lot of this came up for me after I came back from Spain. It was kind of like, you know, realizing that I had no job. I honestly felt like I no longer fit into this idea of myself. This idea of myself that was, you know, built off of financial stability. It was built off of, you know, being the one that's always okay. It was built off of hard work, always meaning that I was going to get exactly what it is I was working hard for. And then, you know, suddenly all of that in the midst of a global pandemic was stripped away. And me, you know, someone who I um, am learning not to describe myself this way, but nonetheless, I am working out of it. And I would say, you know, I deal with fiercely, quote unquote, fiercely independent patterns of behavior. Um, So me, someone who considered myself this fiercely independent person was suddenly living back at home with their dad. Um, And then what I thought was only going to be a month became eight months and I was struggling to find a job. And then I got yoga certified and I, you know, thought I was going to be a a yoga instructor. And that's something that, you know, still is a huge part of my life. But um, 
it was kind of like I had all this time to deconstruct my identity of who I was in the midst of what I was going through. And honestly, I think a lot of people did that. And I think the pandemic really was like a looking glass self moment where you were able to just like take a look in the mirror and be like, who am I and what am I doing? And more importantly, why am I doing it? So that's really, you know, the realization that I came to. And with all of the free time that I had, it really allowed me to stop and decondition myself. Um, I had a lot of long held beliefs that it took me literally a whole pandemic to realize were no longer making me happy. Um, Like, you know, for example, working in media was something that I have basically been conditioned for since before I entered um, middle school. I was always told that I was going to be a a reporter of some sort. Uh, I was always told I was super creative and that I could probably be a writer if I wanted to, but like writing is seen as a lucrative job. And so, you know, something a little more stable is a journalist or a reporter or broadcast journalist. And so honestly, from the time that I was in high school, I pretty much had the idea that I was going to college to study journalism. Um, That is something that has always been a constant in my life. And now, you know, I talk about this sometimes, but I have worked in corporate media from the time that I uh, was 18. I've worked at some really big media companies and organizations doing really, really cool stuff. And I've had a fair shot and a fair opportunity to decide if it's something that I actually want to do. And I'm honestly realizing that it's probably not. And I only say that because I am hyper aware now of the fact that when I am working, I'm sitting down for eight hours a day. Um, A lot of my work is, interestingly enough, not centered around human connection. It's oftentimes centered around administrative work and emails and being a part of this like capitalist machine that just wants to overproduce. It just wants you to keep going and keep spinning out your good ideas and turning them into something that captures people's attention and is profitable because attention is what makes money. Where people's attention goes, I always say this, where your attention goes, your energy flows, and we have found a way to monetize that. And I just feel, a part of me feels really icky, you know, that I'm the one who, in my job roles, I'm the one sitting down and thinking about the psychology of marketing. I'm thinking about what's going to grab people's attention, what's going to hold their attention, what's going to make them watch this reality television show that I work on. Um, So, you know, I think all of that kind of going back to after becoming yoga certified and really being like, okay, this is a shift for me. Like I'm going to move out of media. I'm going to go into being a yoga instructor. Um, Again, I just had a deconditioning moment where I feel like this is something that's becoming more prevalent now, but it really just clicked for me. I was like, why? Do we as people feel the need to monetize all of our passions? Even like when I took up ukulele, I was like, I'm going to find a way to make money off of this. I was like, I like to sing. I like to play. I'm going to make this like a monetary thing. And I I struggle a lot with that because it's like, you know, when you don't want to work in a traditional nine to five, everything is seen as an entrepreneurial uh, quest that you're going on to make money off of something that you might enjoy more than sitting in a room for eight hours a day answering emails. Um, But I I really am trying to, you know, not only build more creative opportunities for myself, um, just to enjoy, just to have a better enjoyment of my life, but then also to just figure out who I am. And I think monetization of your passions and your creativity has its place. But then there's also a place for you to just take a step back and just enjoy Just enjoy creating for the sake of creating. Um, So like I said, looking through my notes here because I wrote so many things. Um, Yeah, so basically after all of that happened, after I felt like the nine to five was not the place for me, I really had to make a decision on whether or not to enter back into it. And I think that's where, you know, my, my big block was coming in so much of the time. I truly believe that because my, my ducks weren't in a row, my intentions just weren't aligning. That's probably why it took me eight months to get a job. Um, and 
at the point that I finally got a full-time job, you know, I entered right back into the nine to five. I'm in the nine to five now and thinking that I had my dream job. And honestly, being like, I work with amazing people. I do amazing things. I'm working internationally. I get to be globally minded um, and like care about things that are important to me. And something still feels like it's missing. And so there's two sides of that, I think, that are going to be a key component of today's episode. Um, And I mean, we're already into it. We're already into the meat of it. But I think there's one component of that. If you hear the harmonica, those are the kids that play outside my window. I think there's one element and one component to that, which is, you know, basically the idea that when you want something, when you think you want something and then you get it, it's this feeling that we've created of always seeking and never finding. And so there's there's this important skill that needs to be developed in people that is all about finding happiness in the present moment. It's all about finding and truly appreciating and savoring the small moments of joy. And we as a society are not conditioned for that. We're not conditioned for that because we want one, instant gratification, and two, we are distracted. At any given point of time in our day, our attention is divided. We're never focused on one thing. We're never thinking about one thing. Even as I'm talking to you right now, my mind is racing a thousand miles a minute thinking about other things and other projects that I have to do. And you think about that, you think about how tiring it is, not only because you're never in the present moments of your life, but because you actually miss out on so many moments. I just, I just went out there for a second. Um, but, but you actually miss out on so many moments of joy in your life that you could have had if you were just like, this is the moment that I have. I'm looking at my window. It's a sunny day. The leaves are blowing. It looks beautiful. Like I'm happy in this moment. And you know, when we find those moments, they're so fleeting. They never, they never stick around. And so if you're somebody who's wondering why this is, it's because we, our minds are always divided. Our minds are always, always, always distracted. So that's one side of it. And then I think the other side of it is, again, an element of deconditioning that has to come into play. Truth be told, a lot of people do not want to do the healing that they have to do to truly be happy. Because a lot of what is making us unhappy is long-held beliefs that no longer serve us. But they're beliefs that we've been conditioned to think that they keep us alive. Like, for example, um, having a nine-to-five is something that's going to create a stable enough income for you to be able to live comfortably and further down the line support a family. If you think about it, do you even want a family? Like, have you ever stopped to think about that? Do you even want a big wedding? Do you even want children? Do you even want to put a mortgage down on a house? These are, like, a lot of questions I don't know if enough people have asked themselves. But it's kind of like if you're not thinking or unthinking these things, your life has a way of just sweeping you along with the wave and just doing what everybody else is doing. And, you know, so if this is the first time that anyone's prompting you to ask yourself those questions, um, I, I really encourage you to do it because, you know, after thinking about it, I know for me in my life, I realized it was like, well, everyone just assumes that I'm going to stay in the country that I was born in and that eventually I'm going to get married, and eventually I'm going to have a family. And so all of that is going to cost money, and the assumption is that I'm going to have a 9 to 5 in order to support that lifestyle. But then if I think about it, and I think, okay, well, I don't want a 9 to 5. I don't want to live in this country. I Maybe I don't want to support a family, it's like you start to deconstruct all of these beliefs and it can be so scary. And even if what I'm saying right now just sounds like, I don't know, new wave feminist or I mean, as a feminist, I am a feminist, but if it, I know that there's a lot of schools of thought that, you know, talk about how millennials or Gen Z are just dismantling a, a prior structure that doesn't need to be touched. And honestly, I think that it's my personal opinion. We're getting into some controversial stuff here. I think that that's a load of crap. Um, I think you should always be questioning. So please, please, please question yourself, question your thoughts, 
And that I think is where the journey begins of unraveling unhappiness and figuring out what truly makes you happy. Um, but I can also say, you know, from reading 101 essays that will change the way you think, from reading The Artist's Way and doing these exercises, I've really been able to identify um, things that are like signs that a change, like that a shift is taking place in my life. Um, and I think, you know, these are ways that I've been able to find more moments of joy, to really be in the present moment and stretch those moments of happiness for me to like take a step back from my life and be like, I may be confused like 98% of the time. I might have no idea where the direction of my life is taking me. I might be going through a breakup. I might not be getting along with my friends or my family, but I know that a, a change is near. So I wanted to also share some of those things with you too. Um, let's see, they're in my notes here somewhere. I'm just gonna dig around for a moment. Oh yeah. Okay. So some changes, some signs that you know changes are starting to take place. You have no idea what you're doing and why you're doing it anymore and who you're doing it for. I briefly mentioned that. So I'll move on to the next one. You're confused on a daily basis. Nothing makes sense to you. You feel lost. You feel directionless. I oftentimes feel like this is the most exciting part because this is really where the universe or whatever higher power that you believe in can intervene in your plans when you are just finally like, all right, I'm just going to I'm just going to go for the ride. I'm going to float down the river for a second. I feel like the universe can really direct you in those moments. Um, your negative energy radar is off the charts and you are super sensitive to the people, energies, and opinions you let into your life. This is one thing that I noticed where I made a huge shift in my life and I had to cut somebody out of my life who was a really dear person to me. Um, someone that like honestly is one of my best friends. And having to let them go in that way was really, really hard. But I honestly just got to a point where I felt like my vibration was just no longer matching theirs. And I just like gracefully had to be like, I think we're on two different paths right now. And I feel like, you know, the treatment of this relationship where it served me so well at one point in my life is no longer for my highest good. And when I tell you, if you ever need clarity on what is serving you and what is not, I just encourage you to ask whatever higher power, God, the universe, whatever you believe in, to say, please remove that which is not for me from my life. And I can tell you that in such a short amount of time, you will see a drastic change and it will seem like your whole life is crumbling, but it's actually not. It's actually, it's actually reconstructing itself for the better. So I don't know if that's like, um, <laughs> makes anybody feel good, but that's kind of how it's happened for me. Um, okay. So yeah, so I'm in right now what's called, or what I would call a process of uncovering or deconditioning of sorts. Um, and it's kind of like, I realized that, you know, when that tower in your life comes tumbling down and you feel like you're forced to wade through the wreckage, it's kind of the point that you start to realize that you haven't lost yourself. You've actually just lost all of the parts of you that have been stuck, stuck to you and assigned to you by other people, by society, by family, by friends. All those things that you don't find in the wreckage, all those parts of you that you feel you've lost were never yours to begin with. And that is such a freeing feeling that if you feel like you no longer identify with who you were, that is, a, that is an amazing feeling and it's an amazing sign that you are outgrowing who you thought you were or who was assigned to you to be. And it's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> um, okay. So now I'm going to be sharing, I know I said this before, but I'm going to be sharing some of my findings from the artist way. And that is basically for, for me personally, and then I hope that it extends out. But one of my main findings has been that I was a very creative child who am now a creatively suppressed adult. I think that that happens to most people. I think most people feel this way, um, where you think of all the things, all the make-believe and the ideas you used to have as a, ch as a child that were just deconditioned out of you, that you no longer think about anymore. I used to write book continuations. I used to read all day long. And then when I was done with my books, I would get on my little laptop and I would type up continuations to the stories. And I would basically write fan fiction. And to this day, like people are always like, wow, you're such an amazing writer. Like I forgot you're an amazing writer. 
And it's honestly because I honestly used to, number one, read all the time and write all the time. That was all I did with my day. And now I can barely find time to read and I almost never write unless I'm journaling. Um, the other thing I realized is that I'm always craving to create something and share it with people. And I'm realizing that at the root of my unhappiness is that I've been living an uncreative and uninspired life. And this is something that's like kind of a hard pill to swallow when you realize that, you know, this thing that is giving you life force energy, you are depriving yourself of, or your lifestyle is depriving you of. And I think that's honestly the moment where I was like, all right, something's not right. My priorities in my life are not lining up. I need creative energy to survive. I need to be creating in order to feel like I'm living my life, in order to be feeling like I am becoming my highest self and unbecoming all the things that are not me. I feel like I need to be putting my creations out into the universe. But the fact that I always feel drained of energy or I spent too much time working and now I don't have time to sit down and make a podcast or write a part of my book or learn a new song on the ukulele. It's like my priorities are not right. This thing that gives me life force energy, I do not have time to do because I have prioritized something else. And that is a nine to five. And I know a lot of people see a nine to five as something that you have to do. But honestly, like you've made a choice to be here. However you got here, however you got in your current situation, you made a choice to be here. And it's almost freeing to believe that just as easily as you made a choice to take the job that you have, you can also make the choice to find another job and do something different whenever you choose to. Um, okay, next thing. I, I wrote down the richer your inner world, the more aligned your outer world is. Work from the inside out. And this is true. It's like the richer your thoughts, the the more that you seek within yourself for answers, the more that you create a baseline of happiness inside of yourself, the harder it is for outer circumstances and people to shake that. Um, and I love that. I think once I realized that, I realized how easy it is to stay true to your path and to stay truly aligned because it's like no one can mess with you on the inside. You know, they can only mess with you on the outside. I said, releasing attachments, facing fears, and sitting down with discomfort will teach you the most about yourself. And I still struggle a lot with this, to be honest. Whenever something uncomfortable comes up, I'm immediately on my phone trying to call my mom, trying to call my dad, trying to call my best friend, trying to call my brother, trying to do everything but talk to myself, trying to do everything but come up with the answer inside of myself that I know is readily available to me. And I don't know why I do this. I know that if I sat down and I just thought about it and I became still, the answer would come. But I struggle. I mean, well, I am struggling a lot with stillness. Um, so this is something, you know, this is more of a me thing. But maybe, maybe it's a you thing too. And then I also said, don't take advice from people. Oh, I like this one. Don't take advice from people whose lives you don't want to have. They don't know what they're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Nobody does. So just do what you want to do. And then I wrote, I need to take my own advice. Um, because once again, I'm always calling other people. I'm always asking what I need to do or what I should do. I'm trying to take that out of my vocabulary because there really is no should do. It's like what people think is right and what idea and reality they prescribe to you because it's either what's been sold to them or the reality they've created for themselves there's no should there's no right or wrong it's like literally do what you want to do do what makes you happy um but of course like you know be safe be safe and make educated decisions and then the last one i said i hate it this is true but your thoughts are the sum of the people around you choose wisely and I really do hate that this is true because sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's like fun. And this is probably the problem that I have. It's fun to have a little like chaos in your life. It's fun to kind of be like griping about the person you're dating. And well, I'm getting too close to home here, but like, you know, how the relationship might not be going in the direction that you want it and how you just like are going to wait for them to wake up one day and realize it's you. And, you know, there's like an element of drama to it all that keeps things interesting that like you want to share with people. It's interesting to have that friend that, you know, seems like they're always in a really tumultuous situation, living a really tumultuous life. Because like, if that's not you, then you're kind of vicariously living through them. When you stop and you think about it, 
I mean, just really think about it. Think about how much that energy actually affects your life on a day-to-day basis. How off kilter you become dealing in these energies with people who are just chaotic in general. How is that really affecting you? Like, honestly, I don't give homework on this podcast, but if I had a piece of homework, just like think about how those energies are really affecting you. And let me know. If you're watching this in YouTube forum, please comment down below and let me know. Um, okay, so I wanted to end this episode with a prompt from the artist way, the same one that I journaled about and the one that I said that I would share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and share it. Um, but I, the question was in, from the book, look at one situation in your life that you feel you should change, but you haven't. But what is the payoff for you in staying stuck? So I actually have to, for those of you watching on YouTube, my whole camera setup is about to get really wonky for a second. But if you're listening on the podcast, you're fine. Just stay tuned for one moment here as my head gets cut off. Okay. So I'm going to read you guys the prompt from my journal. And honestly, I really am an open book. So anybody who knows me knows that this is probably not something that (laughs) is like crazy for me to do. Um on on a public forum but I'm going to share my answer to that question so once again look at one situation in your life that you feel you should change but you haven't what is the payoff for you in staying stuck and here's what I said one situation I feel I should change in my life but haven't is my job slash work situation I honestly don't know what I'm doing in this job and don't or I'm not entirely sure what I would be doing outside of it I just know that after all this time of feeling this way I know this is not the life the creator has in store for me. This is not all there is, and I want to know what the more is. I want to know what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it smells like, and of course what it feels like. To not be creating for a capitalist machine, but for the good, pure joy it gives to me and the light it brings to the people around me and the world as a whole. I don't want to be a part of this system anymore. The system that has raised me for the slaughter. The system that has taught me the faster you you kill yourself, the more money you'll have. This system that doesn't allow me to, my handwriting is so bad. The system that doesn't allow me to trust myself. It whispers, come here and bring your life force energy with you. You are lost and unrealized and I will give you a purpose. I don't believe it anymore. The American dream is actually the American nightmare. Like a night terror, we writhe in pain and the next day we remember the feeling but are too discombobulated and disillusioned to take a well-intentioned step that will allow us to break free. So my payoff for staying stuck is dwindling. Day by day, I'm taking my power back from the system that exploits our labor like chattel and drains our life force like the last sip of sweet tea from the bottle. For now, my payoff for not staying or for staying stuck is being the good, agreeable, likable, obedient girl I have been raised to be. But with all due respect and much as due, F her. I don't want this life that I have worked so hard for. I want to burn it to the ground and start anew. I want happiness, bravery, boldness, audacity, creativity, love, awe, wealth, miracles, spirituality, laughter, and life. I want the real me. I want the me who I would be outside of the system. And I am becoming. I am freeing myself. So that was my answer. And I will end the podcast on that note. I want to know what your answer is, if you feel comfortable enough to share. So as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment down below. If this spoke to you, please give this episode a like. Share with any friends and family that you feel like will really resonate with this. And just thank you guys so much for watching. Um, If you watch my other episodes, thank you for continuing to watch and continuing to support me. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.